Welcome to the Creative Homeschool Podcast. In this podcast, I'm coming at you to deliver you a weekly dash of creativity to make your homeschool exciting for your kids, but for you too. We're going to explore all of the different ways to creatively homeschool. Games, field trips, unit studies, writing activities, kid businesses, art, and more. I'm your host, Julie Soule, longtime homeschool mom, shenanigan enthusiast, espresso drinker, and founder and co-owner of Soul Spark Let's Art. I've helped thousands add creativity and joy to their homeschool, and I'm ready to help you too. Ready to get started? Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of the Creative Homeschool Podcast. Today, I'm talking about math. Now, many of you may homeschool all year long, and many of you may take a break throughout the summer. But there's one thing that we all have in common. Math tends to be one of those subjects that we all wonder whether or not we're doing it right. We want our kids to enjoy it. We want them to excel at it. And sometimes, even if we love the curriculum that we're using, we want to change things up. There are so many incredible options out there nowadays to do that. And I wanted to share four of my favorites today. And we use these in my household when we kind of need a little bit of a break from our regular curriculum. I still want to feel like we're doing math. And I know that many of you understand exactly what I'm talking about when you feel like you want to make sure that you are scratching that itch. So here are four of my options. And you can check the show notes for the links to these so you don't have to go running. The first one is called Mad for Math. Some of these now come with different titles. I have one right in front of me called Math Adventures. Um, These came over, I believe, from Italy. And because they were translated and because they're in different countries, they sometimes have different titles. So be aware, but if you do a Amazon search for Mad for Math, and we dropped a link in the show notes, so you'll be able to at least find one of them so you know what you're looking for. But these have different themes. So the one I have in front of me is for grade five, and it's all on spies. But there are different ones for forest animals. I believe forest animals is the very first one that I use. It's for younger students. There's ones that are underwater, aliens, robots, wizards. So lots of different themes that appeal to kids. And There are things where they're writing, and there's also things that involve stickers. Some kids don't like stickers, but mine love any time they can kind of change it up with a good sticker. We did purchase one of these books that looked like they were supposed to be stickers, but you had to cut them out and glue them. So just be aware that sometimes you might get one that's like that. But My girls both continue to love these workbooks as a nice change. And the logic and some of the problems inside here, they're pretty heavy. And I don't mean necessarily hard, but I mean, they're really getting kids to think and use math in some different ways than the curriculum might use. So Mad for Math is my top pick. The second one I wanted to talk about was kitten math. I know some of you cover your ears. I'm not a huge cat fan. I am allergic. I grew up with dogs and I tend to prefer dogs, but my girls love cats. So we purchased a workbook called Kitten Math by Kelly Pearson. And the workbook's really good at getting kids to learn how math applies to them in real life. So You are pretending that you have foster kittens and you need to measure out their formula, their weight. You need to name them. So you not only get to name these kittens, but you're kind of going all the way through shopping, spending money, buying the supplies. How much of all these different things do you need? So it's real life math. And this is really useful as a homeschooler because Sometimes we want to really bring math down to the level of our home. And if any of you have a pet, this matters. And we have now an incredibly furry hamster. He's a long-haired hamster. I want you to picture a giant pom-pom with legs. That's what our hamster looks like. And my kids are able to use the math from this book to figure out how much bedding, how much food we need to order, and so on. I believe, but I couldn't find it for the show notes, that this author came out with one recently about chocolate as well. But anytime we can get a real 
life math application like this. It's so amazing for kids and it makes it really, really fun. And a lot of these workbooks, they really can reinforce concepts that they might have learned in other areas. Number three, and I just learned about this one recently from one of my team members, and it is called The Times Machine. This one is written by Danica McKellar, and it's about a mouse and a squirrel, and they're going back in time. So it's got history in there and math. It specializes in multiplication and division. So this one's perfect for your second through fifth graders. It's called The Time Machine. Reads a little bit like a comic book. But if you're looking for a way to really reinforce the multiplication and division when you get to that stage and you want kids to be really strong with those because that foundational skill comes into play everywhere. When you get into area, when you get into fractions and exponents, they need to know those multiplication tables and this is a really good way to do it. The last one is not a workbook, but is on the computer and it is from Math Dad, and you see Math Dad pop up on Science Mom's courses if you haven't seen those already. But Math Dad has his own math classes, and my kids are not old enough yet to take one of the full classes, but he has something called Fraction Ninja. It's a really great way to reinforce fractions. There are printables that you can print out, and there are some really fun things where they're using their mouse or their trackpad to try to slice things in half like a ninja if you've ever seen that game Fruit Ninja. So they're trying to get those exact fractions and getting some understanding of how fractions work through that hands-on application and a lot of fun. And if anyone does not know Math Dad's work, he keeps things fun and humorous and they're learning those really important math concepts. So we're going to link to that as well. And if you do purchase any of the Fraction Ninja courses, send my team at support at soulsparklets.com and we'll send you the recordings of one of our workshops. Or if you're not a member, our awesome anatomy bundle to fuel your art journey completely free with the purchase of the Fraction Ninja from Math Dad, because we are now partners and I'm really thrilled to announce that. So just as a review, first one was Mad for Math, which sometimes might moonlight as math adventures. The next one is Kitten Math. The third one is The Times Machine by Danica McKellar. And fourth is Fraction Ninja by Math Dad. And while I was just getting ready to record this, I found a fifth one that I wanted to add, but I haven't used it myself. That's elementary math using Google Maps. So this kind of goes into category two where you're really looking to get that real life experience with math. So I'll link to that one in case you're interested. And I think that's a really, really fun application, especially nowadays where we want kids to understand how to read maps. I know my kids love to pull up Google Earth and try to find things. So I'll link to that one too. I think it's called Elementary Math Behind Google Maps. So that might be something you're interested in too, to kind of blend the math and the geography and math reading together. Okay, everyone, till next time. <laughs>